In this last video, I will show you how we will model a nice looking rope through these two holes. So shift S cursor to world origin, then add curve Bezier. The Bezier curve in Blender is pretty much like the Bezier curve in Illustrator or any vector tool. So when we go to edit mode, we have anchors and the anchor handle and when we move a handle, you can see we can shape the curve. The only thing what's different here is these curves do exist in 3D space. I can select a node, press S to scale, here to G, move it over, bring it maybe under there, R to rotate it like this, go to a side view, S a little bit more, move this up, and then select this and rotate everything. So looks maybe like this. Okay, cool. And we can select this note, press E to extrude another element. And you see how when we do an, an extrude, it copies the handle. So on this we need to rotate a little bit, G, put it under it. This G, we bring to there, click this, G, bring this up, this is too low, okay, yeah. What's really nice about the handle, and that's also the way how we want, uh, sorry, what's nice about the curves, and that's also how we want to model the rope, it should look more man-made, less machine-made. So from the side, the, the rope is too curved, so we need more points. So we select A and go segment subdivide or right click subdivide. You notice exactly the same commands like with mesh modeling. These rotated handles I want to be horizontally flush. So I select all those S, Z and zero. Now Z along global and I can move this down a little bit. There, this looks much better now. And then here, maybe this, oops, G a little bit closer and there. Okay, yeah, cool. So now we have um, kind of like the basic path. We want to give this now a thickness. While we're in edit mode, so we can go here to our curve data uh, properties, and then you go to geometry, bevel, and 0.5 for the rounding. And you see then that gives actually this a rounding, and we can click fill caps, okay. When we zoom in, you can see it's a little bit uh, choppy. So when we scroll up here, there we have resolution. So maybe 24. Ah, I see that looks better. 24. Uh, two. It's very choppy. 32. It's kind of good. Okay. We don't have to go higher. This is fine. And since this is a material, we want transitions to relax nicely. Um, so what I was looking here from the side is to make sure that we do not have something like this where it looks linear and then very abruptly it goes up. So we want to have a nice long handle and it should feel like <clears throat> really gravity is pulling everything down. Okay, yeah, that well, looks kind of kind of good uh, here. Uh, maybe a little bit like this. Cool. Okay. So um, how do we do the knots? That's actually quite easy and fun. First, we can select you know, these two handles here and then these ends we want to pull down. You see how this actually starts rotating? Let me show you what happens when we turn on normal. Actually pay attention to the handle. See, it's slightly rotated, and now this goes along the handle direction. So, pretty cool. Very useful. Okay, very good. Now, let's um, select this one, this whole thing. We move up a little bit. 
there, maybe two, and then select this side view, and then we press E, e not R, and bring this one to there. And we have everything self-intersecting. That's not good. And I want now to we for model and not. To make things a little bit easier, we will go to, with this node selected, control point, set handle type to automatic. Okay. And what this means is when I now, oh, hold on, I just rotated it, so it needs to be yellow. Make sure this is automatic. The moment I move this, you see how the color changed. This is actually, I think, free now. Oh, it's not automatic anymore. There. Anyway, so after automatic, when we press E to extrude and E, you see how the handles update and rotate. So this is actually super useful because when I have all this changed, so we have to first <clears throat> make a loop. So one, two, like this. Okay. Then from the top view, I know I need another one over and one through. Yeah, there's kind of like my super basic knot. And now all I need to do is get everything tight. And you see how the software adjusts the handle for me. There, there. You see how this is kind of bad, and that's because of this one here. So this one we push down. Okay, maybe not so much. There. And this is not a bent metal pipe, so we don't have to be physically accurate. It just look should look like oh, it's a knot. Yeah, <clears throat> maybe like this. Maybe this goes down a little bit more. Maybe this has to go down a little bit more there. Yeah. Top view there. Very good. Okay. And then the last thing, B, select all these points and then I simply drag this one down so it looks like it is actually uh, resting on the plastic. And from this view, maybe I would like to rotate everything. So I go to view and rotate. And you see, I will rotate it based on kind of like, hmm, how can I say this? This is now perpendicular to your display. So you see how Z always is or X always looks at you. So whoosh, there, maybe a little bit like this. Cool. Okay, so let's do this one more time with this other one. So we know actually here, this has to go further down. Then I can select this point. Go maybe to the other side. Uh, oh, so E one up, then automatic and one over, one down, then to there and there and back. Okay. Okay, and then we start adjusting everything like we did before. You see that my view is changing without me pressing this. I'm using actually the hotkeys for the viewports here, which is all on the numpad or the numbers on your small keyboard when you have set up, use those numbers for your views. There, go in a little bit. It's also nice how we can slide these points 
Yeah, there we are. Okay, B, select all this stuff, maybe this one too, and then we switch this back here to view and rotate. So it's maybe it's easier, oh, not this one. Just rotate this there, move this down a little bit more. Again, this is a soft thing, so it doesn't have to be machine-wise precise. It should look conceptually believable. Well, okay. And there we have a very quick representation of actually a rope. So you see that was quite cool. The, the trick there with human made things like fabrics or these things is don't make this clean and symmetrical. I on purpose left this uh, rather rotated. This just adds a little bit more of realism to everything you can even do. And this is maybe too much here, kind of like a, a small move. Maybe this up a little bit there. Now you don't want to make it too noticeable that you try to randomize things, but a little bit here and there is actually quite charming. That takes away this artificial look. Okay, that's it.